I, I want to give people a little bit of background. If you don't know who Dr. Schoenfeld is, uh, those of you who grew up in the Bay Area during the golden ages of the 60s, uh, we uh, were fortunate enough to be a part of. Um, for, first of all, Gene has been on the radio a lot. And in fact, you were a radio pioneer because you were one of the first uh, doctors who, who started taking calls and, and addressing issues that were kind of controversial at the, at the time. Nobody, of course, you became one of the leading experts in the crop of uh, uh, diseases that came up uh, through all these things that happened in the 60s. But people had a lot of questions at that time, and and you were very frank about the way you dealt with that. Was was K San was K San your first radio station? Well, actually, it started on the old KMPX, and then on oh, yeah. KSAN. And I'm told I was the first doctor to answer questions live about any medical issues on on the radio. Wow. And well, that that uh, you should get some kind of award for that because yeah, I know you helped a lot of people, and you helped uh, me even at the time. Who, although my father was a physician, you knew my dad, to um, yeah, when you. Uh, dad you was a great guy, <laughs> and he was one of my mentors w when I was an intern in Berkeley. Oh, that really a terrific. Guy. I'm glad that uh, you guys uh, touched each other's lives because. Uh, I can't think of two more special people in, in the medicine field, and, and my my dad. I know, although he's not here anymore, I, everywhere I go, I mean, he he delivered half the town of Berkeley, you know, and uh, yeah, that's you know, right. people didn't forget him. He he wasn't easy to forget. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. helped teach me how to deliver babies too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I also did radio shows on, oh, KFRC, and mm -hmm. uh, I guess most recently on KITS. Which wow! Is, uh, so you knew you knew uh, Big Daddy Tom Donahue, who yes, was one I, of the founders I, of the whole underground uh, yes, FM. Yes, I did know Tom. And Dusty Street, you knew Dusty, yes, right? Yeah. Yes, sure. I was just in touch with Dusty recently. She, oh, yeah? She's in Ohio now, Cleveland, you know. And uh, but going back even further, uh, you know, we're going to bring you up to date on what Gene is up to these days. But I want to remind the folks so we can put your name to their memories of of what you did you had quite a body of work back then and even before but uh, specifically with the bay area your your columns in the berkeley barb were very well known very well read that was great and uh so you were known as dr hippocrates or the short form of dr hip you know right. how did you come up with with, with that uh, with that well the newspaper column did start in the berkeley barb and the name for it was the idea of the barb's publisher mike shear uh -huh. it was, of course it was during the time of the hippies and so it was called hippocrates after the old greek doctor right and s eventually some of the newspapers started calling it dr hippocrates and then dr hip and i was in the sunday chronicle for a number of years and the chronicle was uh, column was syndicated nationally eventually. Wow. Well, Dr. Hip uh, became quite a well-known figure and, and there were immediate uh, uh, medical needs that were happening. Uh, there were uh, thousands of uh, runaway kids flocking to the Bay Area in the summer of love and after. And uh, the the party that, that was the summer of love uh, soon became kind of a nightmare, you know, uh, because when they started bringing out some of the harder drugs, you know, right, and so then then we started seeing uh, besides the uh, associated uh, psychological and, and uh, medical problems, uh, we had crime, you know, which was crime. was unknown to to us. Uh, love and peace uh, and flowers, uh, hippie beads, uh, the first crop of hippies. We we didn't know crime. Everybody was so trusting of each other, and that was the that was the magic of that time. I mean, I really right. I remember that, Gene. I was a part of that, you know, and uh, it was a beautiful time. I'm really very uh, lucky that I was there during all that. But I also saw it turn into kind of a nightmare, and it happened pretty quickly too. I was going to say that the uh, the era of the summer of love, it was all too short. And yes, it was the introduction of drugs like heroin and methamphetamine that uh, caused a lot of crime and, and many casualties uh, 
amongst the users of that time. And that's why uh, people would ask me questions about the effects of drugs and uh, sexuality and and that's I guess that's why people were so interested in my column because at that time uh, there were no newspaper columns that were dealing with questions of uh, sexuality or drugs mm -hmm. at that time. And there was a, a lot of uh, uh, free sex was going on. There was actually a sexual freedom movement, you know, and um, so we didn't have AIDS back then, obviously. Yeah, it was, people used to say it was the golden age because it was after the introduction of birth control, birth control pills, mm -hmm. but before AIDS. Right. Yeah, uh, so that was really uh, a time of a lot of uh, things developing and, and there was a learning time for all of us, but it was really great to have you there. You were a great uh, presence on the scene and uh, you were one of the founding people from the, the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic and that, that's still going on today, right? It's still going on and uh, I did help publicize it through uh, my newspaper columns and at various times uh, I volunteered there. I was also one of the first doctors with the rock medicine section of their clinic which uh, does a lot of good work now at, at events mm -hmm. like rock concerts. Wow, well that's great. So um, before you came out to the Bay Area um, I want to uh, call attention to the fact that you worked uh, directly with the the great Dr. Albert Schweitzer in Lombarena with the with the lepers you know and and that was how, when I first met you I I got to see that wonderful slideshow when you when you came directly from Lombarena with with uh, Dr. Schweitzer's daughter yes I was lucky uh, first as a medical student you know, I was there for a couple of weeks and then I got a fellowship to return the following summer and then a few years after that, I spent uh, six months there based at the Schweitzer Hospital. So I was very fortunate to be able to uh, work with Dr. Schweitzer when he was alive. And I'm still in contact with his daughter, Raina, who now lives uh, in Pacific Palisades. Wow. She'll be 90 years old next January. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Well, give her my very best regards for myself and my family. I will. We uh, enjoyed uh, so much meeting her, and uh, those uh, slides and and your talk uh, had a profound effect on me uh, at that time. And I was just, you know, in awe of the the work that you were doing with the lepers. Uh, first of all, you know, folks, uh, a lot of people would be uh, afraid to go and be in the presence of, of people with leprosy. You know, um, you know, because nobody wants to catch it is obviously was uh, contagious. So how, how was it that Dr. Schweitzer figured out that he could go in amongst a leper colony and, and, and come out unscathed by the disease in the first place? Well, he learned that it takes uh, many years of intimate contact uh, with lepers in order to get the uh, disease. So that if you're, if you're just treating you know, the lepers and you, you take precautions, you know, washing hands, things like that, you don't actually live in close quarters mm -hmm. you know with the patients who have leprosy then you're not likely to get it it, it is possible but uh, unlikely by the time i was there uh, drugs had been developed to stop the progression of leprosy so i i didn't have those uh, extreme fears uh, i had a little uneasiness but it was one of my jobs there to go each afternoon to the leper village and help uh, dress the uh, the wounds of the lepers. Well, and thanks, John. Yeah. I'd like to tell your listeners that you should listen to John's program and keep listening to KYOU. All right, you're the best. <laughs> thanks a lot. Dr. Eugene Schoenfeld on the Hammond Cash Show, KYOU, San Francisco, California. <laughs>